Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. As you can tell, today we'll be taking a look at Virus Total, which is a ubiquitous tool in everyone's arsenal these days, be it a malware analyst or just a regular user trying to figure out if a file is malicious or not. Today we'll go through some of the ways in which I use it, some of the advanced functions. This video is part of our educational playlist, so it's great for people who are interested in learning more about cybersecurity and getting involved as a researcher in some capacity. So if you're enjoying this content, please like and share. By the way, this video is sponsored by MCSoft, so please check them out using the link in the description, give them a visit, let them know you appreciate it. Now let's dive in. So to start things off, at the beginning of this story, as with every story on TPSC, once there was a malware and today's malware is going to be server which is a ransomware was fairly infamous back in the day we have it open in pe studio over here and we're looking at some of the file properties as you can tell this is not its glory time but it's still a great example of what a ransomware is and what it does so one of the things I would like to talk about to start is the functionality in Virus Total with regards to searching. It's important to understand that when you're looking for malicious files, usually the file name or the hash isn't the best way to kind of find the files you're looking for and also similar files. Now one of the characteristics that I find particularly useful when it comes to finding similar files is import hash or as you can see listed over here, imp hash. Now this is kind of a signature of a file with regards to the imports that it has. So if the imports change significantly, this is going to change, but a lot of files that have similar import table, as in they import similar libraries and functions, which usually means they might serve a similar purpose, will have the same import hash. So for example, if we go ahead and copy the value here, and go back to our search in virus total, we can simply type something like IMP hash and a colon, and then we can just paste the value and press enter. And what this will do is this will search virus total for all the files that have this import hash. And as you can see, immediately our screen is flooded with uh, likely variants of server. If we take a look at this, as you can tell, Trojan Ransom Server, Trojan Ransom Server, quite clear what this is. Let's take a look at the next one. And as you can see, it's the same. If we scroll down and look at one at random, different name, probably a different hash. But if we look at the detections, well, it doesn't say it's server, but bet you what, this is probably server as well, or some very similar variant. And we can pretty much keep going. If we click on this, it'll show us more results. And all of these, as you can see, have very high detections. These are likely all ransomware, and most of them are probably related to server in some way. So let's take a look at one of these. Just select the file and see what virus total says. Now, one of the first features that everybody has access to, which some of you may not notice at first, is the community score. So this is a way to kind of vote on files and give them an up or down, depending on whether you think they're safe or malicious. Sometimes when the detections can be a bit foggy, the community score can clear things up, especially for false positives. So if you see a file that has like 10 detections, instead of asking me on Discord about, hey Leo, is this file safe or not? First, look at the community score and also look at the community comments. So you can pretty much add any comments you like here. Some files will have comments, this one does not. Maybe we should go to one that does. Okay, interesting. Looks like nobody was really around to write comments when server was destroying systems. But you get the point. There will usually be comments here regarding the file and that can give you a very quick heads up as to what this does as fellow users describe. Now, the other thing to keep in mind with regards to detections is also when the file was scanned. This is something a lot of people forget. So if the file was scanned 10 days ago or a week ago, or, you know, maybe a couple of years ago, it's a good idea to click the reanalyze file button. And what this will do is this will go through the analysis again and tell you what engines detect it now. Sometimes, the score is going to be out of date and irrelevant. So you don't want to look at just the detections unless you've analyzed it recently. Let's move on to another file just so we can get rid of that. Now, if we go into details, first total also gives you the same kind of data that PE Studio does. 
So for example, you can look at import hash right over here. You can even actually just click on it and it will do the same thing that we just tried. So it's going to do a search based on import hash. We can also do the same for other file characteristics. So for example, if you want to look at the SSD, you can also do a similar search just for that. Now the history is also very important because this tells you how old the file actually is. So for example, the first and last submission is very recent and the last analysis is very recent. But as you can see, the creation time gives away how old this file actually is. Although keep in mind these dates can be misleading depending on the compiler and the data within the file. Some people go by the first submission date, but it's a good idea to keep all of these in mind. Now if we go into relations, this is where you can actually engage with virus total graphs. What this does is this shows you everything else that this file is associated with or related to in a GUI format. As you can see, once we load this up, this file is clearly related to a lot of similar files which are malicious. Well, in this case, it's server, so that's no surprise. But you can also find execution parents, which means files that create this file that we're looking at when they're executed dynamically. So this is a great way to find the malicious payload and also the attack vector. So for example, this exe file has an execution parent as this, which means there's another file that created this file during its execution process. Now, a lot of people think that Farstotal is just for static analysis, but that's not true. In fact, Farstotal also has a behavior segment. So you can actually look at all the things that the file actually does based on their sandbox execution. So if you don't have a virtual machine set up, this is a very quick way of getting some initial data. For example, what files it opened, so as you can see, this one goes into system 32, program data Mozilla. This is the actual exe file that was downloaded. This is likely another malware executable that it tries to drop. Then here's an associated DLL file. If we look at files written, this is what it creates. Files dropped, kind of the same. And we can also look at these in Verstal just by clicking on them, if they're found. <laughs> It also gives us registry actions. So everything that the file does within the Windows system registry is kind of locked in here. So if you don't want to go through all the things that I talked about before with regards to using Redshot, using Process Hacker, all those tools, first of all, can give you that information very easily. Of course, it's not as detailed. So I wouldn't recommend using this as your only tool, but it's a good place to start. Similarly, we can look at the modules loaded a few highlighted actions. This is usually not very useful as you can tell over here. Sometimes it'll give away key actions that the malware performs. Usually not though. Now, if you go into content, you can actually see all the strings. So this is again, an alternative to something like PE Studio if you wanna do it online. If you look at a file in Verstal, it automatically gives you all the strings. Again, not the best because the string filters here are not very good, but if you want it done quickly, nothing easier than uploading a file to Versal. You can also look at the submissions and the submission country per date, gives you an idea of where this file is coming from. This can quickly tell you which countries are affected by a certain kind of malware. Obviously, if it's an actual payload and there are a lot of submissions, this one is not so because it's likely just submitted by some researcher. Now that we've gone through Varstol for a bit, as promised, I want to show you what Cerber actually does. And this is a very interesting ransomware because one of its special capabilities is that it talks. So let's go ahead and execute it. So far so good, we have the threat in memory, trying to create a fake Java update file. <laughs> let's go. But guess what? It's going to disappoint us because this is a Windows 10 VM and it doesn't do its magic here. There's another important lesson. So a lot of older malware is not going to work in Windows 10 because intrinsic security gets better over time. And this has nothing to do with Windows Defender because Windows Defender is always disabled in these VMs, but it's just issues with compatibility and also vulnerabilities that malware exploits being patched. So that is the end of Cerber. Seriously though, if you wanted to see Cerber execute, I've made a full video on that link in the description. Check it out. Ransomware that can talk. So maybe it can introduce itself. Come on, Cerber. Say hello to everyone here at TPSC. Hello, everyone. I am a ransomware, and you are watching the PC Security Channel. 
Well, what do you know? Once again, if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more such insight into how I look at malware, please like and share the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the PC Security channel. We have a lot of exciting content coming up, including AV tests. Don't think those are going away. <laughs> Not at all. We have a lot of exciting stuff coming up, so stay tuned. This is Leo from the PC Security channel. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.